we will be recording this call as you saw i hope we have everybody's permission to do so if you are uncomfortable being on the recording please feel free to go off camera uh, we record these calls because many of our members are not able to join at the time uh, because it's different times of the day, you know, different time zones and other things, but uh, they do check the recordings and it adds immense value uh, to our work. Um, to the French speakers and Sarah, I will seek your help here. Uh, we apologize. We are trying to fix the record, uh, to fix the translation. Give us a couple of minutes. Translation will come on. Sarah? Could you help just translate that? French speaker? Yeah, sure. Just a message for the les francophones sur l'appel. Nous nous excusons. Nous essayons de, de corriger la traduction, de, de joindre avec la traducteur. La traduction sera disponible dans quelques instants, nous espérons. Merci pour votre patience. Again, apologies and thank you for your patience. Merci, il n'y a pas de souci. Great. Um, so as you all know, the Unlearning Labs really, or some of you know, some of you may not know because you're probably new here. We started the Unlearning Labs series uh, uh, last month, and it's really something that came out of the COVID learning calls that Nellie Mecklenburg uh, from the Institute for State Effectiveness and I used to co-host in response to the pandemic and the demand that we had from all of our members uh, to kind of have a platform where we could come and share not just our challenges, but also how we were dealing with it. So a space where we could co-create, where we could come and share and pool our experiences and see where that would take us. And there was a lot of value that we found in them so much that for almost two years, we kept asking, Nelly and I kept asking, maybe it's time to discontinue the calls. And uh, we kept hearing, uh, nope we need the calls to carry on. And so then earlier this year, we went back and we asked, well, what is it about these calls that people want us to continue? And we realized it was the space that we all had to bring in our lived experiences, our learnings, our experiences and build on it together. And so that really kind of led to the unlearning labs. And I'll speak a little more to that uh, in a bit, uh, but really, the Unlearning Labs is a space for all of us. It is a space where all of us learn from each other and with each other. Uh, in the movement for community-led development, and if you're new to the movement, then uh, we will, you know, we can send you an overview <sighs> later on, but the movement is a consortium of over 1,500 local civil society organizations from all over the world and 72 INGOs. And the movement was started at the UN General Assembly uh, in 2015, really when the Sustainable Development Goals were adopted with the idea that if we really have to realize the SDGs, then we have to put communities front and center in development. Uh, so that's what the movement works towards. And one of the ways that we've been doing that is to re-examine the power relations and the power asymmetries that are in our sector and to ask ourselves, what is our role in shifting the power? And that is really the genesis of the Unlearning Labs, uh, where we realized that so much of it is, yes, we all want to. We have an umbrella strategies with our national chapters. And again, for those of you who are new to the movement, the national chapters are self-organized units uh, where people come together people from local civil society organizations, sometimes the country offices of INGOs, academics, consultants, people who care about community-led development come together, they frame their own agendas and they decide what should be done in their countries to further this agenda. <coughs> Excuse me, the national chapters came up with a strategy and one of the core components of that strategy, one of the three pillars was capacity strengthening. But capacity strengthening so we wanted to undertake that, but we wanted to do that in a manner which is true to our values and principles. And that means understanding, realizing, and valuing the capacity that exists in each one of us and each one of our members, building on the lived experiences that they carry. And that we realized 
meant not just learning about things like strategic planning, about things like gender responsive budgeting, about community led mentoring and evaluation. It also meant unlearning what we know about how the trainings are organized, how training spaces are organized, the relationship between a trainer and a participant. So what we're trying to do these, in these labs is twofold. Yes, we are strengthening our capacities on specific areas which our members have identified, like strategic planning. We're trying to do that with a CLD lens, but we are also trying to see how do we reorganize the space of learning together? How do we reorganize what trainings and spaces for learning look like? And we can't do that without all of you. So we will only unlearn as much as we are all willing to unlearn. And so we're going to invite all of you today to kind of, if it's uncomfortable, this is not what you're used to in a training, it's okay. Let's sit with that discomfort and let's try and see where do we go from here together. Uh, and I want to now really introduce our two facilitators for today, who've been the, you know, the brave ones who started this journey for us. It's not easy to, um, it's not easy to start something, something that challenges your own self, as well as everybody who is in the room with you to think differently and to work differently. Uh, but Sophie Kange, the executive director of Daniva, who is also the vice chair of MCLD Uganda, and Sotan Ziba, founder of Fukira and the chair of MCLD Malawi, took on this task. Uh, and they are going to really be facilitating our journey as we think about strategic planning together and we think about what is strategic planning from a CLD lens and how do we learn and what do we unlearn about strategic planning. This is the second session in this series. Uh, Nelly, Sotin, Sophie were all there for the first session. And I think Sotin's going to give us a quick overview of what we covered in that session before we start today's session. Uh, Sultan, before I hand it over to you, I want to check with my colleagues if we were able to uh, figure out the translation because I'm aware that we have French speakers in the room. Uh, so, John or Pascal, have we had any luck with the interpretation? is not responding. And uh, in interest of time, I would suggest that uh, Sarah and I take uh, the translation and uh, if we join, we could already uh, get, uh, get it. Okay, thank you so much, Pascal. So then could we request, and this is putting people on the spot, so I know if you're not comfortable, please feel free to say so. But otherwise, thank you, Pascal. Uh, so maybe what we will do, Sotin, Sophie, as we go through, we will have to, till we get the interpretation sorted, we will have to do it, be a little more creative. So uh, if you take a little bit of pauses and then maybe Pascal will start with you, if you could help us translate that into French on this channel uh, and then see, hopefully the interpreter will join in. Thank you so much. So then over to you and Pascal. And again, thank you, Pascal. Thank, thank you. you so much, Kunijan, for the introduction. And thank you so much, all of you, for joining us from all over the world. Uh, it's always nice to see uh, a lot of faces from different places and different experiences. Um, Arthur wrote that we have to recognize that unlearning is the highest form of learning. And it's my pleasure to join in the process of deconstructing what we have already learned and uh, coming up with a new form of learning in this era of localization and as well as uh, collaboration. I'll ask for uh, a slide just to give you a recap on uh, what we went through last time. And so to remember to keep pausing so that Pascal can help us translate this for our French speakers a little bit. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Pascal, and thank you, Sotin. Bien. Bon, je, je vous remercie euh, tous euh, de répondre euh, ici euh, dans cette deuxième session de cette série euh, où nous apprenons et où nous désapprenons aussi. 
c'est vraiment un plaisir pour moi de m'engager avec vous euh, dans ce itinéraire de d'apprentissage et de désapprentissage. Donc, euh, sur cette note, je vous souhaite la bienvenue et il a affiché ici le programme. We, we recognize, first of all, in our first session, we recognize that strategic planning is done differently, especially in different levels of organizations. Some organizations, uh, normally, uh, we just sit as technical teams to do it. While in a spirit of following community-led development, we focus on really rethinking how we focus uh, or how we do uh, strategic planning. So we broke down in five stages for that. Bon, la planification stratégique est faite de différentes façons par différentes structures, euh, puis est basée sur des outils également différents. Mais dans le cadre du MCLD ici, nous sommes en train de repenser quelle va être la stratégie la plus adaptée et c'est ce que je vais euh, revoir avec vous ici dans le cadre de cette deuxième session. So, in a nutshell, I will just um, run through the stages of uh, uh, strategic planning, especially with the community-led development lens, uh, so that we try to see what areas we're rethinking on how we carry a live, proactive uh, strategic planning process in our individual organizations, projects, and other endeavors. Euh, premièrement, je vais parcourir les différentes étapes de la planification stratégique et nous allons voir les niveaux ou les étapes sur lesquelles il est nécessaire de repenser hein, le niveau de planification dans le cadre du MCLD. Okay, so here comes a splint. In phase one, the discovery phase, we focused on um, rethinking on how to take everyone along in the organization. We are including the, stake, the key stakeholders, the community, uh, the, the staff from management to lower levels, calling them along in the journey of strategic planning by doing, uh, by answering a number of questions. Alors, dans la première étape, nous voyons comment nous allons repenser, surtout en termes de comment impliquer tout le monde, les acteurs principaux, les communautés, le personnel et tous les autres qui doivent vraiment prendre part à cette stratégie-là. So, here we see, uh, we are answering questions such as why we are doing this. Everyone must know why we are doing it, must know what it takes and must understand where you're coming from and where you're going. And some of the activities looked at um, onboarding everyone, reviewing the status quo, and signing off an agreement that we're going to take each other along in this journey. And lastly, on the outputs, some of the things that will come out in this process on the stage is a plan that will see the people who will be involved and um, start uh, set timelines and move forward to the next stage so that no one is left behind and we have a live process. Okay. Alors, nous devons répondre vraiment constamment à la question de pourquoi. Pourquoi en termes de euh, d'où nous venons, euh, où est-ce est que nous allons, quel euh, accord nous allons et mettre ensemble pour évoluer, qu'est-ce qui va sortir de cette euh, planification, de cet exercice, ça va être finalement un plan dans lequel nous allons voir les acteurs qui sont impliqués et le délai hein, qui, euh, faut on, dont, dont on, doit, on doit convenir pour aller loin ensemble. On phase two, on stage two and three, we looked at uh, internal and external analysis um, um, concurrently or respectively. And in these stages, we dealt deep to get information about organization strength, weaknesses and everything from internal team and on external aspects, like uh, using the silo D2, we talk to the people to see the perceptions, 
to see the alignment on different aspects and the outcomes of these two stages where um, we are structured to provide um, particular direction on things we need to change to align on purpose on phase two and three. Dans les phases 2 et 3, nous faisons une analyse interne et externe de la situation. Nous voyons les forces et faiblesses de l'organisation, les perceptions des communautés et des acteurs, les éléments sur lesquels il y a un alignement et un accord pour arriver finalement à discuter des points sur lesquels il faut faire un changement, pour vraiment viser un changement. Donc voilà ce que les phases 2 et 3 comprennent. So the overall outcome of this process is summarized in four and five, where we see that the strategic direction is not coming from internally the leader of organization, or it's not coming from technical people, but it's coming from a diverse voice of people from the community and different uh, leadership, different stakeholders that are feeding in the direction that would guide a CLOD focused strategy. I think that's the summary for it. Alors, les, les phases finales, donc, c'est-à-dire 4 et 5, c'est ce qui résulte des phases précédentes, qui va être vraiment un document qui n'est pas un document des leaders de l'organisation, qui n'est pas un document préparé par les, techni les, les, les techniciens de l'organisation, mais plutôt un document qui résulte de plusieurs voies, qui convergent et qui vraiment euh, se font dans un leadership euh, dirigé par plusieurs acteurs en même temps. Thank, thank you, you Ophati. <laughs> thank you, Sotin, and thank you, Pascal. Um, so obviously, you know, in the spirit of CLD and its adaptive nature, we are definitely having to adapt on the fly with this call given the the translation constraints which had us start a few minutes late and also mean we are translating as we go thank you again to pascal and sarah for taking up this responsibility so quickly so we were going to go into breakout groups to um, do a little exercise which sophie had actually shared in advance of this call on putting together vision statement, mission statement, value statement as part of the first phase, the discovery and design phase of strategic planning. But I think we are going to instead have a really short group discussion on that. So I will let Pascal uh, translate that and then we'll hand it over to Sophie to lead us in an abbreviated version of what we had planned. Okay. Euh, je ne vais pas faire la traduction euh, littéralement, mais l'essentiel, nous allons passer actuellement euh, à des groupes de discussion où nous allons plutôt faire, nous focaliser sur la vision et la mission hein, de l'organisation. Et euh, c'est principalement cela euh, que nous allons faire au niveau des, des, des groupes de discussion. So Sophie, over to you. Um, and you're muted, just FYI. Thank you so much, Nelly. Um, hello, everyone. Um, you're welcome to today's conversation. And uh, I will go straight um, to the um, session on vision and mission and mission building <clears throat> sorry about that okay yes um yes pasco sorry yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you Sophie. yes <laughs> bon je salue nelly je salue tout le monde et je vais maintenant donner des orientations pour que nous allons en groupe de travail pour travailler sur la vision et la mission hein, de l'organisation Thank you. Um, I just want to, to see by show of hands, uh, anyone who attempted to reflect on the exercise that was shared, the guide that was shared on developing a mission and vision. 
Uh, the intention really was for us to reflect on our missions and visions. I know uh, many of us have them, but looking at the uh, CLB and uh, what um, the principles of CLB and how you would shape your mission and vision. Is there anyone that uh, had a reflection? By show of hands, I'm not seeing any hands. Yes, over to you, Pascal. Yeah, je souhaite que les gens lèvent la main hein, pour exprimer par rapport au principe du CLB, euh, comment ils voient la vision et la mission. Est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui veut partager, lever la main? Ah, je ne vois aucune main. Do you see any hands? I'm not seeing any. Je ne vois aucune main. Yeah. Okay. Jacob, thank you, Jacob. Um, any other hand? So possibly as yeah. we'll wait for other hands, yeah. So we'll give uh opportunity for you to share what emerged for you, um, reflecting on that guide and uh, how to do a vision and mission along CLD lens. Would you, like me to oh, yeah. Would you like me to share? Yes. Oh, great. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so this, uh, as I said, this is a, a and, and I'm fairly new to MCLD. And so this, a lot of this is just, you know, really the way that I uh, have visioned community led design. And, you know, when I, when I'm thinking of, of developing a vision and mission and, and value statement with, through this lens, uh, you know, it's it's something that is is dynamic. Um, you know, I love the fact that it's it's a living statement. Um, you know, I in in mine, it's really you know, it's really about bringing bringing power and sustainability, you know, back to communities. Um, to empower local organizations to develop shared values and collectively approach challenges in the community. And so for me, it's it's really about collaboration and uh, you know working as 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 a collective in communities. Each each member has different strengths that you know they can bring to the table. And so instead of just focusing on one challenge and letting others you know start to emerge, you are all collectively approaching as a group. Um, and you know, in, in terms of a mission statement, uh, you know, that's, I'm, I've, I have bits and pieces, uh, but you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's about creating you know, circularity, sustainability, um, and you know, doing this, as I said, really the the the, the values that are driving this are, are shared values um, and the idea of, of collective impact. Thank you so much, Jacob. That is uh, quite insightful. Uh, Pascal, do you yes. want to raise yeah. uh, a hand? And I believe that one is Fred speaking. Yeah. So possibly you can share some from Jacob, then we'll go to the next one. So, uh, thank you, Sophie. Uh, ce que Jacob a partagé avec nous, il dit, uh, pour uh, exprimer la vision et la mission, il a trouvé ça de façon dynamique. Il n'a pas libellé ça comme uh, uh, on a l'habitude, mais il en a donné les éléments. Le premier élément, c'est le, le pouvoir. Hein, le pouvoir et des valeurs partagées, la collaboration, le travail ensemble avec des forces venant de différents acteurs pour mettre l'accent sur un défi majeur que tout le monde va atteindre ensemble. C'est comme ça qu'il a essayé de décrire les éléments de la vision. Et par rapport à la mission, c'est d'arriver à créer la durabilité avec des valeurs partagées et des impacts communs, un collectif impact, oui, des impacts communs. Voilà les éléments de la mission qu'il a essayé de donner. Et tout ceci basé sur des valeurs partagées. 
Thank you. Um, I'm adapting to French also, so <laughs> next time I'll be speaking it. Thank you, Pascal. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, so the colleague from Tosu is called Tosu. I hope I pronounce it well. It's well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I want to go in French. Fine. Euh, pour ce qui me concerne, euh, je vais partir d'abord de la vision qui est pour moi, si nous devons nous baser sur les principes du CLD, particulièrement à partir euh, en utilisant le participatory CLD assessment tool, je trouve que euh, le focus sera euh, déjà sur la vision de tous les parties prenantes c'est-à-dire les communautés qui doivent bénéficier de, du développement elles-mêmes. À part les communautés, il faut recueillir les connaissances de chaque partie au sein de cette communauté, ensuite orienter vers les autres partenaires qui doivent contribuer au développement de cette communauté, qui doivent nous conduire à la résilience de cette euh, communauté de base. Mais il faut que ce changement doit induire euh, un changement d'ensemble, une solidarité, une co-création, et euh, qui doivent conduire à un moteur, euh, je veux dire, et une solidarité entre les individus ou groupes sociaux qui doivent conduire vers une société durable, résiliente et vers l'aspiration des communautés. De deux, en ce qui concerne la mission, c'est de partir de la vision pour créer des structures, des activités qui permettent à ces personnes qui ont participé à la base, à la conception, vers des actions collectives et qui vont euh, agir de manière responsable sur leur société afin d'être des acteurs de changement social, sans oublier l'inclusion parfaite du changement de mentalité. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Over to you, Pascal. Yes. OK. Euh, Béranger, euh proceed uh, as uh, Jacob as well. He didn't mention uh, vision as a statement, but he came with the main component that we need to consider when we want to have a statement of the, our vision. First, we need to consider the CLD principle, and uh, he referred to the participatory CLD assessment tool. Uh, we need to refer to that and focus on the aspiration of the communities, the knowledge of the communities. And we need also to refer to the strength of the community. And we need to consider all this in relation, in collaboration with all stakeholders to build the resilience by co-creation, collaboration, and solidarity. Those are the main uh, component we need to consider according to uh, Beranger. We want to have a statement of coming to our mission. Mention that we need to refer also to our vision and uh, uh, to make sure that we have a uh, key agent for transformation we make sure that we could really develop co-create activities with key agents for transformation. Those are the key elements for the mission. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you, our two uh, colleagues that have shared their experience. Um, I get two powerful, I mean, a number of powerful statements. Uh, on visioning uh, around 
um, collaboration, co-creation, and solidarity. And in community-led development, the community is key. And so, like we're saying here, the future you are trying to create through your work comes through your vision. And if you can't create a future without the community in need, sometimes and many times, you're moving alone. And so, the aspects of solidarity are key: collaboration, and you raise issues around sustainability, but also to bring to tap into the knowledge and strength of at the communities. And so this um, is uh, the way we align your vision and mission to, um, to your visioning uh, to CLD. I also see in the um, chat, something has said, a vision with CLD lens goes beyond what the organization wants, but also look at the goals and vision the communities have for their future. And that is the power in adapting to CLD. I just uh, want us to remember, uh, just to remind us, uh, we said um, the vision has to be understood and shared by all members of the community. It has to include all the perspectives of the community. Aspirations, it should be uplifting to everyone. So as they align to the efforts, that you're trying to put in place. So the vision has to be short and clear. And we are given uh, information or examples of uh, creating caring communities. And this, the vision actually has to touch the need of the community, yeah? So I just want us to remind ourselves uh, on the CLD principles. If Nelly, you can... Um, Give us yes, a slide. We're going to have Pascal translate. Um, and Sarah, you Oh, can... sorry. No worries. Thank sorry. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Yes. Oui, euh, le point que Sophie était en train de faire, c'est à partir des interventions, euh, l'accent a été mis sur la collaboration, euh, l'alignement qu'on doit avoir entre la vision et la mission par rapport également au principe du CLD. Et puis, il a, elle a mentionné également dans le chat boss, il y avait euh, une idée où la vision doit dépasser ce que l'organisation veut. Et plus loin, euh, on voit que la vision est vraiment partagée, qui prend en compte les perspectives et les aspirations de la communauté à nouveau. Et la vision doit être claire et courte, formulée de façon courte. Et... et euh, Toujours en considérant également les besoins de la communauté, comme euh, j'ai mentionné plus tôt. Voilà. Yeah. Thank you, Pascal. And so, just um, to 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 run us through the principles of CLD. Um, one is participation, inclusion, and voice. I see a hand. Let me just run through the principles, then we'll give you an opportunity to speak. Yeah. Then we have uh, local resources. Remember, someone said we need to tap into the local knowledge, strength, and the resources. One, the other one is about sustainability and exit strategies. How uh, sustainable are we uh, coming to? How sustainable are our visions? and missions, then accountability, issue of mutual accountability. How do we engage? How do we have closed feedback loops in all that we do? A responsiveness to context. So your vision, and I mean, a CLD looks at being present in the moment. And that's the way you can only meet the community's needs. And then collaboration, this has been raised a number of times, working with some national government. So as civil society, we don't work alone, but we work with um, the subnational governments where programs are implemented and all our work has to align with government. The aspect of monitoring and evaluation of processes, we need to continuously learn. The unlearning labs are part of this process. <clears throat> what are we learning? <clears throat> Sorry. 
what are we learning that is uh, needed now to be done differently? So learning to be continuous in uh, CLD and then facilitation. Yeah, we are all agents to, to facilitate communities rethink and unlearn and discover themselves. So these are the principles. And align to the sharing that we've had, I'd like us to share what we are unlearning at this moment. We've all seen different visions and missions and how they've been made. And we could share our areas that we are unlearning or the new learnings that come with this uh, sharing. Over to you, Pascal. Thank you. Uh, OK, euh, dans cette euh, partie, il a mis surtout l'accent sur les principes du CLD. La première partie, c'est la participation, l'inclusion et la participation à la, à la décision, la voix au chapitre, comme on dit, hein, de façon à participer euh, aux prises de décision. Elle a mentionné également les connaissances locales tout ce qui existe au niveau local qu'on peut valoriser. Elle a parlé de la durabilité, de la rédévabilité, du compte rendu des parties prenantes. Chacun est comptable l'un de l'autre pour que la collaboration puisse perdurer. Il faut réagir par rapport au contexte et être présent dans l'instant euh, où l'on parle de façon à ce que nos actions puissent être orientées sur la base de ce que les communautés vivent. Une fois encore, la collaboration a été mentionnée. La collaboration qui s'étend au gouvernement local et la prise en compte de l'évaluation des actions, il faut considérer que nous apprenons continuellement sur la base de ce que nous faisons. Qu'est-ce que nous apprenons? Comment nous prenons ceci en compte? comment nous repensons nos actions sur la base de l'expérience. Voilà principalement les éléments qui ont été évoqués en termes de principe. Et la facilitation so également much. qui a été mentionnée. Oui, oui. Voilà. Thank you, Pascal. Yes, so um, at this time we take the hands. There's someone who had his hand. Yeah? I'd like to have uh, your thoughts. Pascal, do you see the hand? I can't remember the name of the person. Uh, hello, this is Annette. Annette. <laughs> I didn't Annette. mean I didn't mean to grunt out loud. I was looking for the hand, but I'm going to uh, forget about the hand. Um, so a few thoughts, um, and this might be going a little too deep, but I think of it now and then, and I'm going to voice it now. And that is, we today seem to be looking at this from a leadership perspective of MCLD. And I know that, and that's fine, and the lens, I should say. Um, when we say um, not only co-create activities, but make the, uh, make, um, to have the community set um, an agenda to a certain point, um, to uh, create its own uh, mission, uh, mission statement, value statement, what is important to them. And then I see on the other side, the international affairs sector. Um, and it, of course, does not align. So one thing that I think of is unlearning traditional approaches. And I'll take, for example, USAID, which of course is going through this great change, well, a good change, um, and it's gonna take them a long time. And it's gonna take a lot of other organizations a long time to really, really get this because organizations after all are companies. They might be official nonprofits, but they have costs and they have, uh, they have to make money. So, I can't get past this part of the organizations need to make money. Um, how can they do that um, with, um, with communities uh, setting their own agendas for what's important to them and, um, uh, and still operate as an organization 
in other words, the co-creation is very important. And so I'm, I'm always questioning whose vantage point are we looking at? Um, and when will be, and I think uh, some people in this, on this call right now, I, I know, um, do know about local communities. And so I guess I, I'd be interested in hearing from some of them um, for their, um, their dual um, identities as a community leader and as a member of, for example, this call or a call of an um, international organization and so forth. That's all. D'accord. Um, sorry, that was a lot, Pascal. I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. You'll do a summary. Yeah. Uh, je regarde uh, la question du point de vue de leadership uh, du CLD. Je vois euh, la co-création de façon active qui va se manifester dans le libellé, comment nous allons formuler la vision et la mission toujours en nous collant sur ce que les communautés veulent, ce qui est valable au niveau des communautés. Je comprends cela, mais quand je regarde du point de vue des autres acteurs, et en particulier les acteurs au niveau international, et l'exemple de l'USAID a été mentionné, euh, je vois que ça va prendre beaucoup de temps, beaucoup de temps, et euh, il s'agit des compagnies qui travaillent sur une base de, de profit et comment nous arrivons à lier ces deux euh, intérêts, intérêts des communautés et le, le train de marche de ces organisations. Je, je me pose vraiment la question, hein, simplement. Je vois la co-création importante, mais... La question reste là. Euh, si je n'ai pas totalement euh, euh, épuisé les idées, vous pourriez peut-être euh, traduire parce que vous parlez bien français. Thank you, Pascal. Um, the one thing I would add is uh, perspectives, and yeah. that I know people on this call are certainly uh, well versed and fluent because they are they have dual identities as um, uh, community leaders. Uh, for example, uh, in actual living communities and the vantage point of this group in other international fora to hear their perspectives. Yeah. Thanks. Bon, et puis ça m'intéresse, puisque tous les acteurs sont présents sur cet appel, euh, ça m'intéresse vraiment de, de voir comment ils analysent ça, comment on peut euh, passer ce cap, comment on peut intégrer ces deux euh, niveaux euh, Ils doivent vraiment converger, même si on les voit euh, de façon différente. Quelle est la perspective? Quelles sont les perspectives? Thank you so much, uh, Pascal. You're doing great. And uh, Annette for raising those pertinent issues. These are issues that we need to continuously reflect on. And I'm seeing in the chat there are also contributions. Uh, I know Lumenga had his hand up. I remember and he has posted, but I would like you to speak, if you may, uh, if you want to speak more about your submission, uh, which says, in addition, our contribution would be to see the passage from words to concrete actions, because local communities in increased vulnerabilities and miseries expect concrete change and effective collaboration to achieve the realities and assigned objectives. And that's why we're speaking CLD. Um, Lumenge, do you need to, do you have something more to add? It would be good to hear your voice. You are muted if you're trying to speak, Jacques Lumenge. Kindly unmute yourself, Jackis. Okay, so maybe at another time when you're ready to speak, but it also raises um, practical uh, things. And for me, uh, the value that CLD brings is when you're talking about working within the knowledge, the resources within communities, then concrete actions will happen. Yeah, and aligning to what Annette says, how 
to what extent, how much unlearning are we going to do, especially when we are uh, more assimilated into the international system. And uh, we have a community that is skilled to being directed, to being guided. How do we empower? And uh, CLD comes in, yeah, to put the community first. And so it is a process. And that's why we are also one of the principles is about facilitation, help the communities discover their potential in um, addressing their problems. So concrete actions and how we put them in place starts with vision, being a mission statement that aligns with the needs of the community. Yeah, and that's the conversation we are having today. Pascal, over to you as we yeah. conclude this. Et les éléments sur lesquels Sophie revient, c'est plutôt la valeur ou même la valeur ajoutée du CLD qui doit partir des connaissances et des ressources à l'intérieur de la communauté, ressources présentes au niveau des communautés. La question, c'est comment renforcer les communautés et faire en sorte qu'on débouche sur des actions concrètes. Un élément clé qui a été mentionné très souvent, la facilitation, la facilitation pour arriver réellement à cela. Passons à ce que les communautés, leurs aspirations se traduisent véritablement dans la mission et dans la vision. Thank you, Pascal. Um, there is another a comment in the chat from Anima Shama. And learning is more challenging than learning as a process. Process like previous learning options and diversifications and learning through experience and exposure. But how can we determine the extent of learning? This is complex, <laughs> Anima. But um, the, I think the, the reason we are having these unlearning labs yeah, is to start a conversation, a process that enables us and learn, enables us adapt to these new ways. I see my colleague's hand up and uh, possibly he, I'll, I'll invite him in, then we go to Pasco to translate. I agree with you, um, uh, Anima. I think unlearning is hard. And in these conversations, we are really like for the strategic session, unlearning is about really the willing and the intention to shift from the traditional uh, values. We know how to make a vision statement. Also, a lot of us know how to do um, um, the basic things or the key things in a strategic plan, but there's a certain way we do it. So are we willing to move from that? That is the question I think we can actually adjust uh, with time, uh, the willingness to shift, to say this is how it's done and think about doing it in a different way. But I really thank like you, the question. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much. Um, over to you, Pascal, and then thank we'll you. Trans thank you. Um, shift to the next session. Euh, ce que Sophie avait dit, donc euh, l'apprentissage n'est pas chose facile. On apprend à partir de l'expérience, on apprend à partir de plusieurs perspectives. Et l'utilité de cette session qu'on a appelé un learning. On apprend et on peut désapprendre aussi, mais c'est un processus. Il peut prendre du temps. Et euh, notre collègue Soti, facilitateur, a ajouté que nous savons de façon formelle et traditionnelle comment on élabore un plan stratégique en considérant des éléments que nous connaissons. Mais du point de vue du CLD, Est-ce que nous sommes prêts à faire vraiment un changement par rapport à notre vision traditionnelle? Est-ce que nous avons la volonté de, de, de faire quelque chose de nouveau qui prenne en compte les aspirations des communautés? C'est la grande question qui est au cœur de l'apprentissage. Thank you. Merci. Merci. <rire> Yes, so uh, thank you. Uh, so you see how deep the conversation gets. And I'd like to encourage us to continue reflecting 
on this. We are going to go into the next session uh, guided by Nelly and we'll have more reflection on how we integrate align CLD to all uh, what we are doing uh, in strategic planning. Over to you, Nelly. Thank you very much, Sophie. And again, yes, thank you all of you for your patience um, and willingness to adapt as we go. We were going to have a discussion on um, unlearning around vision statement, but in fact, we sort of did that a little bit um, and we'll keep coming back to it. I'll pause there, Pascal, for you just to do that quick translation. Great. Uh, Nelly a dit ici que ben, on, on, on va passer à la phase suivante où nous allons concrètement voir comment on peut, et, euh, de façon plus, plus pratique, euh, libeller une vision dans le cadre de, euh, du CLD. Thank you, Pascal. So in looking at the vision statement, we were really thinking about phase one of strategic planning. Now we're going to move into breakout sessions, um, which are gonna look at a couple of different exercises around phase two, three, and four of, um, of the strategic planning process. To do this, we're going to use a case study that some of you, if you've been part of the COVID series for a long time, you might even recognize. There's a French version of the case study uh, on available online. I put a link into the chat box. So please click that if you want. Pascal, to you. Okay. So we're going to do this exercise, considering the uh, phase. Uh, un euh, de l'exercice, ben, et nous allons le faire plutôt à partir d'une euh, étude de cas. Euh, cette étude de cas existe également en français et je vais mettre dans la voie de discussion le lien et vous pourriez recourir à ce test en français si vous le voulez. Thank you, Pascal. So, just to quickly look at this case study, you can read it on the screen. But we're going to look at a made-up organization called the Borno Youth Collective, which is based in Maiduguri in northern Nigeria. This fictional organization trains youth leaders to facilitate community meetings in uh, areas impacted by internally displaced people um, and that, that host populations of internally displaced people. And in these community meetings, uh, youth leaders work with community members to discuss and identify their development priorities and how to follow up on them, including identifying beneficiaries, knowing their rights, things like that. And it's a small team with a small budget, and they're often funded as local partners for big organizations. And you can see all of that information on the screen. And we're going to now break into two breakout rooms. Alors, tout, Go ahead. Yeah. Toutes les informations sont mentionnées ici sur, sur le sur le écran. Vous pourriez bien lire ça. Mais il s'agit également il s'agit ici d'une étude de cas de Bordeaux euh, qui est au Nigeria, dans le nord du Nigeria. Alors les il y a des jeunes leaders qui s'occupent des personnes déplacées à l'intérieur du pays et ils regardent avec eux euh, les besoins, mais euh, avec vraiment un petit budget et une petite équipe. Donc, euh, tous les autres détails, vous pourriez vous référer à ce qui est mentionné. So we're going Alors, to nous, break... nous allons partir en, en, en groupe de travail. Great. So we're going to break into two groups. One will be in English, and it will look at a SWOT analysis, which is an internal analysis that many of us are familiar with, which is used to think about the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that face an organization. Where many, some of us may be familiar with this, but we're going to, as we said, unlearn it 
and learn it in a more CLD way. Okay. Alors, l'outil d'analyse proposé ici, euh, c'est à, à partir de quatre éléments, les faiblesses, les forces, les opportunités et les menaces. Donc, c'est un outil que, que vous connaissez certainement, hein, qui analyse euh, la situation de cette façon, ça qui est proposé ici. Thank you. Faiblesse, force, opportunité. The second okay. breakout room will be in French, and that will look at something called a pestle exercise, which is an external analysis that looks at different external factors affecting an organization. But again, we will look at it with a CLD lens. Okay. Le premier groupe, c'est le groupe uh, uh, des de, de pays uh, qui parlent uh, la langue uh, anglaise. Donc, le deuxième groupe, c'est le pays, c'est les, les, les pays de langue française qui vont mettre beaucoup plus l'accent sur l'analyse externe. L'analyse externe, mais en s'appuyant toujours sur euh, les principes du euh, CLD. Thank you. And we will record both uh, breakout rooms. So if you're in one, you can always watch the other one later and vice versa. So don't worry about being able to be in both. It says 50 minutes, but we are adapting and going to be only 30 minutes. Um, and with that, Sarah, if you don't mind setting um, up the- Nelly, okay. sorry. This is Kanjin. Just to clarify that uh, the SWOT is only in English, but uh, the PESTEL is English and French. Uh, so we will have, we'll be doing something similar to what we are doing here wherein we'll have our facilitator, uh, Sothin, speaking in English, but we will have our colleagues, Sarah mm. and Pascal, helping us with the French translation. But we will only be able to do that in one room. So. Yes, so if Sarah, if you can um, help us start to set up the breakout rooms such that people can choose which room they want to go to. I think room one will be French and English, is that right? Uh, yeah, so if you want to do Pestel or if you are a French speaker, don't do anything. If you are to do oh, okay. the SWOT analysis, just join room two. So you do, you do a breakout room join SWOT if you want to see that. Okay. And if you have trouble, put it. Sera, tu veux bien traduire ça? Oui, pas de souci. Uh, donc, pour les groupes de discussion, si vous voulez travailler sur le uh, SWOT, c'est-à-dire le à um, uh, femme, les atouts, faiblesses, opportunités et menaces, il faut aller dans le groupe SWOT, mais en fait, on ne va pas avoir les traductions en français dans ce groupe. Donc, si vous voulez travailler en français, il n'y a rien à faire. Vous allez rester dans la salle normale. Et nous... Hey, uh, Derek, are you an English speaker or a French speaker? Just checking. I can't hear you. Can you unmute? Great. So this room is for the English speakers. People will join in. So please be patient a couple of minutes and Sophie will be here and she will be helping with the facilitation here. Uh, but thank you for your patience. All right, well, Sophie, I will go ahead and share that table and can take notes in there. Um, and we've got 30 minutes. Thank you, Nelly. Hello, welcome to the SWOT group.
So uh, we'll have, um, yeah, we'll have a conversation on uh, looking at SWOT in the CLD lens, and uh, we have some guiding questions that uh, would like us. I'm reading now. Hi, uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, welcome everyone for joining this group. Let me just uh, give it a moment. Next. Yeah, I almost lost power. Um, in the spirit of keeping time, thank you all for joining. This group, we're going to focus on um, looking at best method for um, um, strategic planning, external analysis with the CLD lens. This will be very participatory and I'll be speaking at a faster pace that uh, short versions to allow translation. And I would encourage the same so that we have a lot of notes in the chat and we have a lot of conversations. Um, um, Sarah? Thank you. Um, je ne suis pas aussi fort que Pascal uh, pour la traduction, mais je ferai de mon mieux et j'espère que ce sera mieux que rien. Donc, nous allons dans ce groupe nous concentrer sur l'examen de la méthode d'analyse pastel, uh, politique, économique, sociologique, technologique, environnementale et légale pour la planification stratégique. Uh, Sotin va faire quelques pauses pour la traduction, mais il veut que le, le groupe sera très euh, participatif. Donc, n'hésitez pas de lever votre main ou de juste parler quand vous avez euh, quelque chose à dire. Thank you. So tense, sorry, this is Gunjan. If I can quickly come in here for a second. Uh, I know that we were planning to write on the Pestel tool. So will you be taking notes? Because I, if Sarah is translating, I don't think she'll be able to screen share, write and translate together. Okay. So uh, will you be able to do that? Will you be able to, or do you want me to try and screen share and take notes? Please uh, screen share and take notes. Okay, I'm going to try. My computer is frozen. So if okay, that doesn't indeed. work, then you may have Let to. Let me do share it. the screen then. <laughs> I can manage both. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, sharing the wrong screen. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, and we can put the French case study in the chat box for everybody to read while we are just screen sharing. If you can quickly read the case study. And Sarah, if you can just translate that for people. Yeah, uh, nous allons sure. mettre le document okay. pour l'étude de cas dans le chat pour, pour que vous pouvez prendre quelques minutes juste pour lire l'étude de cas avant de commencer la discussion. Thank you all. Uh, having read the case study, the key things we're seeing in this discussion, um, the level of funding organization is in, the key aspect area they're working the communities with, and we are seeing uh, the transition that they're going through from COVID-19, as well as a, a government shift, which, uh, which positions it in a very uh, volatile situation, and this is an extreme case, but a very good um, case study for us to look at the PESTO analysis. Donc, vous allez voir dans l'étude de cas les éléments clés que nous voyons, euh, c'est la transition qui traverse, c'est-à-dire la pandémie de COVID, le changement de gouvernement 
Donc, c'est vraiment un cas extrême, mais c'est un étude de cas très utile pour nous, pour l'analyse pour pastel. So, looking at this pastel, pastel refers to four, to four five elements. Initially, it was just political, economic, and others. But now they added technology and environmental factors. And the elements are key for us to, for the for organization to have an external picture where they will function and how they will navigate the different uh, scenarios that they will go through in a specific period strategic time they're setting themselves. En regardant cela, nous avons cinq éléments pour l'analyse pastel, politique, économique, sociologique, technologique et maintenant aussi environnementale et légale. Et ces éléments sont vraiment essentiels pour, pour nous, pour avoir un, une image externe de la façon dont l'organisation peut naviguer des différents scénarios. So, looking at uh, how we should do this, I'll be able to uh, talk about an element, ask the quick questions uh, to the group, and I want you to type some identified opportunities and threats uh, in the case study that we already have. Any comments that you have to say, I think, the situation they are in, political level, these are the threats and opportunities they face after I explain. So tap from the case study, and then we'll move along like that. Nous parlerons de chaque élément et examinerons les différentes questions dans ce document. Donc nous examinerons les opportunités et les menaces pour chaque élément. Et vous pouvez mettre vos idées dans le chat ou vous pouvez parler directement. So, um, the first scenario we're looking at, this organization is going through a transition, is, is in a country where there's a lot of transition in policy. And this means uh, a change and shift on the focus on people who are displaced, a different position uh, financially and global standing politically. So we're looking at the tax policies shifting, the stability of a government, whether it is trusted by external uh, um, supporters, uh, we see that the organization gets uh, funding from external community. That's a key one. Dans ce scénario, il y a beaucoup de transitions dans la situation politique. Il y a des personnes déplacées, euh, des personnes dans des situations financières différentes, dans un gouvernement instable. Donc, nous cherchons à savoir si le gouvernement est euh, digne de confiance s'il euh, est pour cette organisation que le financement euh, vient de l'externe. Uh, we have a similar organization in Malawi that is going through such a shift. And what we are seeing already, uh, the COD lens is that uh, all refugees have been asked, for example, the displaced people had been asked to be confined in camps instead of staying in a, uh, an economic uh, environment. The government shifts and they say, move back. That begs the question. Some of the illustrative questions we are already asking are some of that are here. En fait, il y a un exemple d'une organisation similaire au Malawi à ce moment qui connaît un changement similaire. Euh, nous constatons que les personnes déplacées sont confinées dans des camps au lieu d'être dans un environnement euh, où il y a des opportunités financières et nous regardons comment le gouvernement répond à cette situation au Malawi. So, when we are looking at a scenario like this and we are doing a strategic planning, we ask, uh, uh, we, we want to do a political context analysis. We have to ask, how is this political shift affecting uh, the community in question in terms of social service, uh, service services, which are dictated by the government or the political scenario, as well as asking ourselves, what is the relationship between the community and the leaders in there uh, that are incoming? Uh, if uh, such a community 
had already established solid relationships with different people. So how do you really dig deep? I'll bring it back to you as uh, some of the people who um, may have context in this. How do you really, uh, what are you looking for? What threats are you looking at in such a scenario? Euh, Lorsqu'on examine un scénario comme celui-ci, il faut se demander comment ce changement politique affecte-t-il la communauté en termes de services sociaux dictés par le gouvernement. Et aussi, il faut demander quelle est la relation entre la communauté et les, euh, les, les leaders, les dirigeants. Et si une telle communauté avait une relation avec d'autres des leaders et des gouvernements, comment considérer ce contexte Quelles sont les menaces Si vous avez une idée. Vous pouvez lever euh, la main, vous pouvez mettre vos idées dans le chat, comme vous voulez. What threats and opportunities do you see in that scenario that are more political elements of uh, that can affect the work of that organization's in our case study. So, Tin, this is Gunjan. Can I quickly come in here for a minute? Yes. Uh, so, just to everybody here, remember that we are learning and unlearning together. That means there are no right or wrong answers, but we we are in this together. So, we need your responses. So, think about the case study and see if you can identify the political concerns in there, and especially if there is anything you see about the community government relationship or the political concerns that may affect the community. And if not, if it's not clear, then say so. If you think there are other concerns, political concerns from a community-led development perspective, feel free to share that. Type, speak up, English, French, Whatever is comfortable. Euh, okay. Juste pour vite traduire, rappelez-vous que nous apprenons et des, des apprenants ensemble. Donc, il n'y a pas de, de réponse correcte ou incorrecte, mais il faut euh, que nous... Pensez ensemble et si vous avez des questions, s'il y a quelque chose qui n'est pas clair, vous pouvez aussi dire et on peut regarder l'étude de cas ensemble pour, pour penser aux quelques menaces pour la communauté. Ah, Go ahead. Uh, you're muted, Jax, if you're trying to speak. You will need to unmute. Are you able to unmute? Or maybe type? Si vous ne pouvez pas parler, vous pouvez aussi mettre vos idées dans le chat. Um, while we wait for the um, manga, any other hands? I see Kelvin on the chart, I see Mark. What are some of the threats that come to an NGO or organization of impact when there's a political shift? What do people should, what should they look out for that will affect the community aspect of work? Quelles sont les préoccupations politiques euh, Ou sinon, que savons-nous de la relation de la communauté avec le gouvernement dans l'étude des cas 
maybe certain we can ask if in the communities where you work, what kind of relationship do you see between, say, the local government and the communities? How responsive is the local government? I lost you, Gunjan. So I was just wondering if people in the communities where you work, what kind of relationship do you see between the local government and the communities, for instance? Do you see an interaction, regular interaction? Does the local government listen to communities? Are there spaces and forums for that interaction to take place? Uh, is there no local government or is the local government not strong enough? What What is the situation? Nous faisons juste un peu de uh, brainstorming ici. Quelle est la relation entre la communauté et le gouvernement local dans l'étude des cas? Que savons-nous sur la relation entre la communauté et le gouvernement? Est-ce qu'il y a une relation? OK. Somebody asked about the relationship between the community and government. Uh, and to explain that again, uh, so, so Tim, do you want to take that? Uh. Um, so, I have already typed something. Um, in such organization that say they say in the case study that they work closer with existing committees in the in the com in the community. With a change of government, in some cases, those uh, leadership that are local governance led also shift. They change the building new leadership. So a political shift in a country means a change in, in community structures across uh, the community. So we see some countries that these changes will mean that you have to restart rebuilding capacity, rebuilding relationships with the new people that are ascending to power at community level. At the same time, we see that the policies and the values of the community or governors also shift into uh, an entry mode of uh, regulation, social policy shifts. So political analysis directly affects uh, how the organization will also uh, enter the community or will continue with their projects for the long-term uh, sustainable impact. Donc, dans l'étude des cas, nous voyons que la communauté travaille uh, en entrate, collaboration avec la, le gouvernement, mais nous voyons aussi que le gouvernement change. Donc, cette relation affectera les structures communautaires uh, à quelques niveaux. Nous voyons un, un risque possible avec ces changements parce que nous pourrions avoir besoin de commencer à reconstruire les relations avec le gouvernement. Uh, en même temps, les valeurs du gouvernement pourrait aussi changer, les politiques peuvent changer. Donc, l'analyse politique affectera le fonctionnement de l'organisation. Yeah. So, this happens across, uh, from political uh, scenario, some of the key changes that happen are also in economic uh, environment that will affect where the institution is located. Right. Uh, so then there's something in the chat. I think people have identified a couple of, Grant has identified some political threats uh, about diverting attention from local priorities, which is very important from a CLD perspective, right? Uh, and also this thing of uh, demand for services 
between what is and the resources available. So the mismatch between the demand and supply in some ways. So what kind of resources come in? And I, I think there's also this point, if I'm reading it correctly, around who gets those services, right? So there may be a political angle to that as well. If there are particular groups that come into power, they may, for instance, in this case study in Madiaguri or in Northeast Nigeria, you know, are certain groups targeted and are certain groups left out while others get the benefit of government schemes because of the nature of who is in the government. Donc, certains changements clés se situent également dans les, les environnements économiques qui affectent l'institution. Et il y a un commentaire dans le chat qui dit une autre menace est la demande croissante de services par rapport à la division des ressources et ses effets sur la qualité des services aux euh, bénéficiaires cibles. Et les autres menaces sont donc qui bénéficie des services. Par exemple, certains groupes sont-ils laissés de côté alors que d'autres bénéficient des prestations du gouvernement? So we see here that on the points that are coming from the group, whether the political change will bring change in uh, social services allocation. This is a key element that we have to assess as an institution. How are we going to balance social inclusion, a key uh, uh, CLO, community-led development uh, dimensions, versus also how are we going to, uh, to really allocate demanded resources or services? In, in uh, according to principles of uh, CLOD, we know that there has to be adequate allocation of resources. But with a change in political scenario, it means a change in priorities of the government based on their promises, based on their biases, and based on their uh, also um, uh, different values, whether they are focusing more on security instead of social service provision or emergency protection. Uh, parmi les points soulevés par le groupe, nous constatons que le changement politique entraînera des changements en matière d'inclusion sociale, qui est vraiment une dimension essentielle du développement piloté par la communauté. Et aussi, il faut penser à comment allons-nous allouer les ressources. Avec un changement de scénario politique, il y aura un changement dans les priorités du gouvernement basé euh, parfois sur leurs préjugés euh, et leurs valeurs. So in this same uh, principle, we see that it applies to economic situation where I've highlighted funder income status, a global economic situation, like a global crisis, which has affected uh, um, um, like the war in Russia. Are uh, the uh, global north going to keep directing resources with the global south? And how can this organization evaluate economic standing with their donors, dinner community, with their funders and partners to navigate a more sustainable source of income, source of sustaining the activities in their growth journey. So you see uh, a need for sustainable means. I'll, I'll jump quickly trusting that Sarah will capture that on the key which I'll highlight. Um, so the essence is not to lose uh, continuation of key services due to shifts in economic trends. What do members see are the major causes of poverty and how can we sustainably answer the, this with the people in a more local way. D'accord. Donc, dans ce même principe, nous voyons qu'il s'applique euh, aux situations économiques. Par exemple, une crise mondiale qui affecte tout le monde. Un exemple de ce type de crise peut être la guerre en Ukraine 
Euh, donc, comment cette organisation peut-elle évaluer la situation économique avec les barres de fonds afin de trouver une manière plus durable de mener ses activités et l'essentiel est de ne pas perdre la continuité des services clés en raison de l'évolution des tendances économiques. Donc, une question, quelles sont, selon vous, les principales sources de pauvreté et comment pouvons-nous euh, travailler avec ces sources dans nos programmes Thank you, uh, Sarah. I see um, some comment in the group. Maybe you can pick a key one while I jump to uh, relating on social and uh, one last element on the same trend. There's a uh, group comments about participation from the team. Sarah. I think I've translated most, Sarah, maybe just the one from Grant, if you can tra translate that into French uh, for people. Yeah, donc, euh, pour traduire le commentaire de Grant dans le chat, il a dit que sur le plan économique, on assiste à un passage à des cycles de financement à court terme de la part des donneurs et des bailleurs de fonds en raison de demandes et de financement concurrentes. Thank you, Sarah. So, then, do you want to take on the social one now? Move to the social? Because yeah. I think that also brings in one of the key elements from our uh, tool, and everybody is about to rejoin. So, we will be sending out the table, but this was just to give you a sense of how to begin to take the best elements and apply the CLD lens. Okay, on social, quickly, we see that the organization aims to grow. I'm laughing because of the time. Organization aims to grow the, through population. Uh, they're growing, they're understanding the different groups. They are understanding what happens uh, if there is tension within groups in that community they are working in. And they're also considering um, uh, leadership groups as well as power dynamics that will shift in the group. How is this going to affect their approaches? So we want to be positioned like that. I think I'll write more on that instead of commenting. Sarah, I know people have joined us, but do you want to quickly translate just the power dynamic part of the social and then we'll come back? Yeah. Uh, nous constatons que l'organisation a besoin de se développer par le biais de changements sociaux, donc soulager les tensions au sein des groupes dans lesquels elle travaille, le leadership et la dynamique du pouvoir. Thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, time went by very quickly. Uh, we are sorry that we couldn't do the full 15 minutes that we wanted. I know in the Pestel tool, we only managed to cover three of the elements out of the five, uh, but we will be sending out the tables in both languages along with the recording for everyone. Pascal, are you helping us translate them? Or... Oui. Um, ce tableau va être rendu disponible pour tout le monde, mais on progresse à ce rythme. Je crois qu'on est sur le deuxième élément, hein, je crois. On a, on a fait la dimension politique, la dimension sociale, mais bon, on va le rendre disponible pour que chacun puisse continuer de réfléchir là-dessus. Hein, du point de vue toujours du CLD. Great, thank you. So, to everyone uh, who was in the SWAT rooms and in the pastel room, if you have done these, if you've used these tools before, let's take a step back and think about what did we do? If we, did we do anything differently today when we thought about SWOT or we thought about Pestel? And if yes, what did we do differently? Should I stop sharing? Uh, yes, thank you, Sertin. You can stop sharing. 
and Pascal, if you translate that for me, and then Jacob will take your hand. Okay. Oui, oui. Si nous regardons euh, ce, ce, ce travail que nous venons de faire, c'est de voir si euh, on devrait le faire du point de vue du CLD, qu'est-ce qu'on ferait différemment, que nous allons faire différemment. C'est l'interrogation que nous devons avoir de façon permanente. Qu'est-ce qu'on devrait faire différemment? Comment on doit le faire? Thank you, Pascal. Jacob? Yeah, so... You know, what I, I, I wrote down the CLD principles in action. And as we were going through the SWOT analysis, you know, just constantly going back and forth and, and doing sort of a check uh, to make sure, you know, in terms of, of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, that, that you really do, you know, approach this with a CLD lens and, and, and those principles you know, allow you to with, with a lot of confidence. Thank you. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah. Oh. Oui, quand je regarde cet exercice, et à partir du moment où nous avons les principes du CLD, je regarde les critères et je regarde toujours par rapport au CLD, hein, les caractéristiques que nous avons. Mais en regardant les, toujours les forces, les faiblesses, les opportunités, les menaces, et c'est par rapport à la grille CLD. Thank you. C'est ce any... que Jacob a dit. Does anyone else want to share? Was there something that you were doing differently? Like Jacob mentioned, he was, you know, he was constantly referring back to CLD principles. Did you think there was something you were doing differently? Uh, did we unlearn anything through this exercise today? Alors, est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un d'autre qui veut prendre la parole pour dire ce qu'il veut faire différemment? Est-ce qu'il a désappris quelque chose par rapport à ce qu'il faisait et qu'il veut partager avec nous? And if not, did we learn something new? Did we... Was the tools familiar to you? Ou bien vous avez appris quelque chose de nouveau, ou bien le euh, cet outil d'analyse était déjà familier à vous. Vous l'avez déjà utilisé dans votre expérience. Um, well, I'll share from uh, the sort analysis. Um, I think the unlearning happened at the time. The fact that you ask deeper questions about yourself as an institution, the, the, the depth on how actually you position yourself in the new context. We were looking at COVID-19 and uh, uh, a new government, and we're asking, you're able to ask, what does this mean to us? For example, um, the organization we were looking at was placed in the city, and we were like, in the eyes of CLD, then the opportunity that comes with this organization is that it should be positioned in the community, put offices within the communities and tap the resources, be a direct link with the communities, rather than come with uh, like visitors, like most organizations do, they go implement and come out, yeah? So to reflect deeper on how actually CLD would manifest in your new face, in your new way of doing work. That was uh, the unlearning uh, point. Okay. Ce que moi, j'ai désappris, c'est en fait, euh, euh, si euh, on regarde la situation en termes d'analyse de force, faiblesse, opportunité, menace, euh, de regarder peut-être la situation, la situation dans laquelle on était, on est, donc, euh, c'est une situation de crise, une situation COVID-19, une situation d'insécurité. Mais ce qu'on devrait faire du point de vue du CLD, c'est de demander comment la communauté reflète, réfléchit par rapport à cela. Ce point est essentiel. Au lieu de commencer peut-être par imaginer des actions pour secourir la communauté, c'est de demander à la communauté comment elle vit cette situation, comment elle réfléchit comment elle se positionne par rapport à cette nouvelle situation. 
que je j'apprends de ces chiffres. Thank you. Does anyone else want to share anything they learned or unlearned? Uh, and I see a point in the chat from the Bangu. If uh, it's in English, I will read it out in English. And then, Pascal, if you could just translate in French for us. On the socioeconomic level, the communities continue to see their standard of living deteriorate from day to day, and poverty and misery are accentuated. The measures taken by CLD can be breathtaking once implemented. Oui, du point de vue euh, social, euh, la communauté continue de voir donc son standard de vie se détériorer de jour en jour et la pauvreté, la misère euh, s'accentuer. Euh, les mesures euh, prises par le CLD peuvent euh, être un secours pour la communauté une fois mise en œuvre. Thank you, Pascal. Um, what we do want to do is that, you know, we want to... Uh... We want to now, you know, we've looked at four stages of the strategic planning table, if you look at it. The first phase was what was the homework, what we did initially, and then we looked at two, three, and four, some tools that help us get to that through the PESTEL and the SWOT analysis. What we do want to do is we want to quickly look at the fifth phase so that, okay, so now you have done your strategic plan with your community, sitting with the communities, with the community lens. It's adaptive. We know it's a live document. We've done a very inclusive process. Now what? What do you do with the strategic plan? Ah, oh, Pascal? Yeah. Mais lorsque nous regardons tout ce qu'on vient de faire, et alors, l'étape suivante, qu'est-ce que nous faisons avec le, stratégique, le plan stratégique? Comment on l'intègre à toutes ces réflexions là-dedans? Je crois que c'est la question qui se pose. So, uh, I think Sophie is now very quickly going to take us through this part five, which is the fifth phase, which is what do you do once you get the strategic plan? Uh, before I hand it over to Sophie, I do want to say one thing, and which is for me, the learning and unlearning in this process has been that as a practitioner, I have been very, very much, you know, always focused on how quickly we can get through content. How much content can we get? You know, make sure that people who have got as come to a call get as much as possible from it. And I think for me, the biggest unlearning has been to do to pause, to breathe, that the most important thing in a call is not to pack as much and everything that you can into it, but to create the space that whatever you share, everybody in is, is in it together. And so even if it means going slower, because, for instance, today, language issues, when we decided to cut a lot of the content that was already there for today's call, so that we can, because we are spending literally twice the amount of time in back and forth. But the accessibility and inclusion and all of us being in it together is more important than how much content we could cover. So thank you for helping me unlearn that. Uh, Pascal, to you, and then Sophie, to you. Bon, avant de passer la parole à Sophie, mais ce que j'ai appris ou désappris de, de ça, c'est le contenu. Euh, il faut apprendre dans le processus à faire des pauses, à réfléchir ensemble, à donner l'espace pour que tout le monde puisse s'exprimer. Et dans le cas d'exemple aujourd'hui, nous avons donné plus d'espace à ce que tout le monde soit ensemble que de, de, de donner un contenu que, euh, que forcément tout le monde ne regarde pas parce que euh, il pouvait y avoir la barrière des langues. Donc maintenant je passe la parole à. à... Merci Pascal. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, as we come almost to a close, like uh, Gunjan said, thank you for that uh, background, Gunjan, and the unlearning. Um, we have the strategic plan. It's within the CLD link, and we're asking how will we share this plan with all the relevant stakeholders? Who are they? So this takes us to a bit of mapping. 
stakeholder mapping. During the SWOT uh, group, we also reflected on how we map out stakeholders on how uh, who we will work with. But remember, strategic plan uh, is your marketing tool. It sells you to the outside world, but also connects you to the community that we will be working with. So we'd like to reflect uh, on this maybe today. So the question is, I found out from you. Yeah. I'll give that again. Please mute yourself. Thank you. So how do we share this plant relevant stakeholders who are they and uh, who does actually the sharing and how do we keep this plan alive? Who will, how will we ensure that we are following the plan? Yeah. So we could have a reflection on this and also still within the CLD lens. Remember we have uh, generated the plan through a participatory process. Now, even using it should be in a participatory process, but how do we do this? We'll appreciate uh, learning from your insights uh, by show of hands and we we'll give you opportunity to speak. Over to you, Pascal. Oui. Bon, le point final, hein, c'est que chacun puisse vraiment s'exprimer. Vous pouvez lever le doigt pour dire Comment allons-nous partager ce plan avec toutes les parties prenantes concernées et qui sont ces parties hein? Et qu'est-ce que chacun va faire Comment allons-nous faire vivre ce plan véritablement si on l'élabore ainsi Et comment allons-nous assurer le suivi hein, de ce plan Mais ce qui reste important et qui a été mentionné au début, c'est la cartographie des acteurs hein, en sachant ce que chacun fait dans le processus et la connexion qu'il y a entre ces acteurs-là. Il a été mentionné au début. Merci. Um, yeah. So, anyone that wants to share will answer th these three questions. How do we share the plan with all relevant stakeholders? Remember, in this plan, we have our vision that tells us where we are going, and then our mission, our ambition to cause transformation and change, um, and also the specific interventions that we plan to do. So I've seen um, a post in the chat from uh, Lomenge, peace, development and healing are very important instruments to make people's lives very active and can bring about lasting change. My question is to know what concrete mechanism the UNCCD plans to do in this regard. Jackie, this question is uh, not clear. Uh, do you want to speak to it briefly? Is it aligned to the current questions we're reflecting on? Because we are looking at how we use the strategic plan. How do we share? Yeah, we've seen a number of organizations. Um, the first person we share our strategic plan with is the donor. Well, like in many cases, uh, we do strategic plans because the donors ask. And for me, the unlearning bit that I'm getting from here is that uh, strategic planning should be community generated it should evolve organically not to because the donor has asked for it yeah so while we we have this product i think the first thing is to get back to the community and tell them this is our vision yeah this is our shared purpose as the community this is the change that we want to see yeah because under cld the community uh, has to own this, has to be a sense of ownership of this ambitious vision, yeah? So to get back as the key stakeholder, the community should receive the strategic plan. And then you understand, but most important is to have a stop and you say, who do we need to take this vision? Do some kind of mapping, yeah? And, uh, and see, because also you're able to generate new partnerships that come with it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, 
really on from your experience what um how you'd go about this uh question pascal yeah yeah hey. Je, je voudrais vraiment avoir votre point de vue sur comment nous partageons ce plan. Généralement, euh, nous partageons ces plans, le plan stratégique avec euh, les agences de financement, les donateurs, parce que c'est eux qui l'exigent. Mais ici, nous pensons, je pense que nous devons partager avec la communauté parce que c'est un plan qui a été généré par la communauté comprend la vision, qui comprend la mission, qui comprend l'ambition, qui met les changements spécifiques et les interventions spécifiques. Donc, et vous, qu'est-ce que vous pensez? Comment on peut partager cette, ce plan qu'on a généré? Je veux avoir vos réflexions là-dessus. Thank you, Pascal. Uh, yeah, so in the chat, there is a contribution, uh, which is very uh, good, the aspect of validation. And I'll go a step further to the community and say, this is what we developed based on your, on your vision and ours. Did we get it right? Yeah. So it should be validated as by the community so that we are sure that we are moving together as one. And then, uh, says, remember our plan is a living document. So if we didn't adequately reflect the community views, or if the situation has changed, we can adapt, very true, yeah? So um, yeah, so the, the thing is, how do we keep this alive? When we go back to the community and realize that some of the aspects are missing, we're able to adapt, that's the beauty CLD brings. Uh, to the space, to the development um, terrain. Over to you, okay. Pascal. Oui, yes. uh, ce que nous mettons ici, uh, c'est les commentaires qui sont dans le chat. Je vais au deuxième commentaire où c'est mentionné que je souhaiterais aller plus loin. Uh, Je irai d'abord à la communauté hein, et dire que ce, leur montrer ce que nous avons développé ensemble, basant sur la vision, euh, leur vision, leur mission et tout le reste. Voici, c'est correct. Mais je, il y a le, le deuxième point qui mentionne également que le document, c'est un document qui est vivant. Et si c'est ainsi, euh, nous devons voir si cela reflète euh, de façon, euh, si les points de vue des communautés sont reflétés de façon adéquate et si la situation change, alors comment on doit adapter également ce plan. Donc voilà euh, deux points que on partageait ici au niveau du chat. Merci. Um, yeah, so any more reflection on this before we close? Uh, how do we ensure that we are following the plan? I think, yeah, continuous engagement, go back and do evaluation with the communities and all the other stakeholders. There are those strategic goals that we've set out, the things that we want to do. So keep constant reflection, are we on track? Yeah, I will mean, most people deviate when they get the, the strategic plan because it was not organically generated. They deviate from the strategic plan and start planning with other uh, things. But we see all the, the beauty it brings to, the, to this game is that you're dealing with the community and they will always remind you, are these the things that we committed to do? Are these our priorities, you know? Yeah, so by that, we are able to keep the, the, the plan alive. Uh, in the chat, I see uh, Lomenge says, we must create consultations and collaboration cells in the form of community relays within the community. This is powerful, yeah? The consultation and collaboration cells, accountability partners, um, this is 
critical because one of the principles we have here is uh, collaboration and accountability. So before Joanna comes in, I've seen her hand up, we can help us still do the translation. Hello. Je crois que avant de venir à ce qui est mentionné dans le dans le dans la boîte de, de discussion, euh, il faut revenir souvent au plan en termes d'évaluation, continuer de réfléchir pour l'adapter. Il s'agit d'un plan qui a été généré par la communauté. Nous, nous, nous travaillons avec la communauté sur la base de ses priorités. Donc c'est un plan vivant qui doit être constamment et continuellement actualisé, adapté au contexte des communautés. Et il y a dans la euh, boîte de discussion une idée de, de Jacques qui parle de, il y a une autre idée qui vient, euh, il faut une consultation permanente avec la communauté qui doit avoir des cellules de, de consultation et de collaboration hein, euh, pour être sûr que la communauté participe et adapte réellement le plan à ses, à ses besoins. Il y a également une autre idée ici. Ah oui, c'est toujours déjà. Et oui, collaboration. Il, il aime vraiment l'idée de collaboration encore. Mentionné à la suite de son, son point. Et il y a une autre idée ici. Euh, une minute. All right. Sophie, is someone, there someone? There's a post in the chat in French. Oui. I think that's just um, uh, noting that it can take, a, that we, we are over time and appreciating everybody's oh, okay. uh, staying on. So I think, Sophie, is there anything you want to add before we close? <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you, uh, everyone. But we had one other hand. I would love to allow Joanna, because I had promised I'll get back to her. Then I can say what I want and hand over to you, Nelly. Thank you all for bearing with us as we moved a little beyond the time, but we'll request uh, at least 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Sophie, and um, I will be very brief. I just wanted to respond to your question where you said who should be um, in charge or in position of sharing the strategic plan. Uh, for me, I believe that uh, if it is a co-created um, initiative, then everybody who has been part of it would be um, in position to share it, would have the responsibility to do that. Um, if all community members uh, produced a strategic plan together, when we look at the CLD context, then they should all be ambassadors to it because it is um, it creates a sense of ownership and also um, commitment to see that there is achievement to what they are looking out for. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you so much, uh, Joanna. Yeah. So the sense of ownership that comes with it and. Uh, it takes me to, yeah, the question is who should be sharing the plan? And like you say, it should be owned by the community. So while as a facilitator, you're in the community, the community should speak to this plan. For example, if they are sharing the plan with the district officials, the community members, in the CLD um, approach should be able to share the ambitions they have, yeah, guided uh, by the facilitator, yeah. And then, so uh, having uh, strong structures like uh, Grant Opio says that we to keep the plan alive, which will strengthen community structures. Having, uh, in other languages, otherwise we call them champions in the community, community champions that are able to speak to the plan. This is our plan, this is our agenda, yeah? Rather than have it kept in a given organization and always brought to the community, yeah? So that is the unlearning that happens with the CLD links that the community takes charge and owns this plan, yeah? So um, I hope I've... Um, 
Yeah, so I think that is it. It's quite an exciting uh, conversation, but I want to appreciate uh, the opportunity to unlearn a number of things. And I think Miss CLD brings, is a game changer, like I've always said, that we do things differently. And the more we work with communities, the more we shall have sustainable development and transformative uh, interventions for greater communities. Over to you, Pascal, and then to Nelly. Il y a une question qui est venue de Johanna. C'est que si le plan est élaboré ensemble avec les communautés, il devrait avoir une bonne appropriation. Donc, cette phase d'échange eh, qui est recommandée, donc, euh, ça, ça n'aurait vraiment pas de valeur ajoutée si à toutes les étapes, les communautés ont participé. Oui, euh, a dit Sophie, en plus, c'est vrai que le, le plan doit toujours euh, être basé sur les priorités des communautés et euh, il doit vraiment avoir une voix forte. Et ce qui est essentiel ici, c'est d'avoir des champions au niveau des communautés qui doivent savoir que le plan, c'est pour eux et ils doivent vraiment agir à partir de ce plan qui est, a reçu la collaboration, a été élaboré en collaboration avec tout le monde. Donc, je crois que en bref, c'est cela. Et je passe la parole maintenant à Lé. Thank you so much, Pascal. Sorry, Sophie, go ahead. No, I was just saying merci to Pascal and that to appreciate him. He's really uh, so adaptive. I don't know how he jumped on board, <laughs> but he has really done a great job. Thank you so much, Pascal. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Pascal has been the uh, superstar of this call, <laughs> but I also want to thank Sarah from MCLD, who's been behind the scenes, and Sophie and Soten, certainly, for also being very adaptive, and to all of you who um, allowed us to change plans and were okay with us doing it on the spot so that we could make sure that everyone could participate. Pascal, over to you, and then I'll I'll close this up. We good minutes. Uh, Sarah, j'étais un peu distrait. Si tu veux bien m'aider, j'ai pas bien suivi. <laughs> oui, pas de souci. C'était juste pour uh, dire merci à à moi, à Sophie, à Sotine et à vous tous pour être adaptive avec nous et pour votre participation et votre patience. Thank you, Sarah. So, thank you, <laughs> thank you Pascal. Um, we are going to stay on the call for another 10 to 15 minutes after this because we'd be curious to hear from you about the unlearning side of this series. We will be continuing these in the new year and we want to make sure that we are really doing the work of unlearning both in the topics but also in how we run these these sessions themselves over to Sarah or Pascal oui euh, nous nous allons rester encore euh, un moment sur cet appel pour regarder ensemble comment nous avons euh, organisé cette session certainement prendre les dispositions pour euh, les autres les, les autres sessions Donc, merci à vous. Thank you. And, and just for people to know, in the new year, in January, we will have our next capacity strengthening series. It will either be on community-led monitoring and evaluation, COMEL, or on gender-sensitive budgeting. Um, and we would love to hear from you which of these you want. They they came as ideas from all of you, but which ones you'd be interested in. And if any of you want to help organize them and lead them like Sophie and Soten have for these calls, uh, we would love to work with you. So please just let me or Gunjan know. D'accord. Donc, au mois de, de janvier, nous allons organiser d'autres sessions pour euh, toujours dans le cadre du renforcement des capacités. 
vont porter sur, euh, une sur l'évaluation et une autre sur le budget, sens, euh, la sensibilité d'élaboration de, 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 de du budget par rapport au genre. Donc, euh, on souhaite qu'il y ait des facilitateurs au sein de, de l'équipe. Et si vous êtes intéressé d'assurer la facilitation, comme Sophie et Sophie, donc euh, veuillez euh, vous rapprocher de moi-même, Nelly ou euh, de Goudjan. Merci. All right, thank you so much. We are going to transition into a conversation about the unlearning side of this work, but for anyone who has to leave and hasn't already, please feel free to drop off anytime. Okay. Great, Nelly, do we want to just quickly start reflecting a little bit then on, on basically, I think what we want to understand from everybody is that we wanted to unlearn as much as we wanted to learn from this, but as you saw, it's not easy to do that. There is a lot of hiccups from language to just being adaptive on the call uh, and a lot of things that we missed, I know, from my side, there were so many times when I felt like, oh my God, but we won't be able to cover this. We won't be able to cover that. Is it fair? And then eventually had to teach myself to be like, no, this is all about being together and the inclusion is more important than how much content is covered. Uh, but that was just my personal reflection. I wanted to see if uh, others had any ideas around how we could strengthen the learning or the unlearning component, what worked in the call and what did not work. And again, Pascal or Sarah, if you could help us just communicate that in French. Yeah, I can jump in and give Pascal a bit of a break. Thanks. Uh, donc pour uh, faire un petit exercice à la fin, si vous voulez rester sur l'appel et sinon, uh, Merci beaucoup pour votre temps. Nous voulions désapprendre autant que nous voulions apprendre de ces appels. Et Gunjan sait que de son côté, il a fallu beaucoup de réflexion pour s'assurer que l'appel était entièrement consacré à l'inclusion et au travail sur le contenu et l'apprentissage. Donc, une question pour vous. Qu'est-ce qui a fonctionné pour vous lors de ces appels et qu'est-ce qui n'a pas fonctionné? <coughs> pas fonctionné. Anneli, I think we just ask people to unmute and speak up if they have anything they want to share about the format, how they want to see this done in the future, what is good, what did not work, any suggestions, right? People just jump in, type or speak. Nelly, you muted. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so we would love to hear, I mean, as we said, this, this call, I think, has really in and of itself been an unlearning experience of, um, you know, as Gunjan said, choosing inclusion over getting through a set agenda and everyone on it uh, by being super flexible and adaptive, I think was um, a real demonstration of that. But I think the questions that you see up there, you know, are, are what we want to hear about. Do you feel like you have unlearned either about the content of strategic planning or in the way these calls were held? Um, what do you think we can do to strengthen the unlearning, the de deconstruction of things that we we're all used to that's top down and not inclusive and if you have any ideas or just reflections that's really helpful sorry i was muted cet appel a été en soi une expérience de désapprentissage, car il a permis de choisir l'inclusion plutôt que la réalisation d'un programme établi euh, 
pour aujourd'hui et de faire preuve d'adaptation. Euh, Donc, les questions sur le PowerPoint sont ce dont nous voulons en entendre parler. Avez-vous le sentiment d'avoir des appris et que pouvons-nous faire pour renforcer le désapprentissage? Euh, merci de nous faire part de vos réflexions ou de les mettre dans le chat. So there is a submission in the chat in French. Thank you, Sophie, for keeping track of that. <laughs> Thanks, Sophie. Um, and thank you. Uh, merci, Ola Ducan. Um, the message says that I think that the explanations given today are clear and that the animation, the facilitation was also good only that it will be necessary to solve the problem of translation from the beginning. Thank you. Absolutely agreed. We are, we'll work on it. Hi, on the facilitation section, sorry, my background is a little bit noisy. I'm in the streets now. Um, I've learned the preciseness of getting rid of the buzzwords and coming to the point through this need for translation. I had to be precise. And at first I feel like I'll miss a lot about uh, the authenticity of the descriptions that I'll make or share with the group. Uh, but it really helped me really think about how do you come to the point in the simplest way um, that will um, have continuity. And the question of how do you really uh, um, continue the conversation to be interactive in such a chat. Mm -hmm. uh, en ce qui concerne la facilitation, Sotin a appris que uh, à se débarrasser des mots, um, des buzzwords, des mots à la mode, et à être plus précis pour aider à la traduction et aller directement au but de la manière la plus simple que possible. Did anyone have any other reflection for us? Any other suggestions uh, on what worked? What could we have done better? So that the next two sessions that when we do those unlearning labs, we can build those into our work. One thing that I missed was um, the information that was shared earlier and the fact that we only got one person responding and agreeing that they had reflected a bit. Um, yeah, so the question was, what, what didn't work well? Uh, how come um, people didn't relate to, to what was shared? Um, maybe it was, I don't know how interactive then would make it. Because uh, I think the intention was for them to go home and reflect and come with uh, issues to share. But um, yeah, so maybe we need to think around those lines uh, on how we share take homes. I know take homes are always not easy, <laughs> especially for online engagements, but how then we do it is the question. Uh, Sophie, uh, veut réfléchir davantage à la question de savoir ce qui n'a pas bien fonctionné. Uh, comment avez-vous réagi au contenu qui a été partagé? Et, et elle dit que peut-être nous devons uh, réfléchir à la manière dont nous partageons les informations que les participants peuvent emporter chez eux et travailler par eux-mêmes. Est-ce que vous avez des pensées sur... Uh, uh, comment on partage l'information?
All right. Well, Quinjan, I mean, it's been a it's been a long yeah. call. And I think people have given already so much content. Um, should we wrap up there? Yes, I just had one last follow up question to what Sophie said, because I think that's very important yeah, for us okay. going forward, Nelly. And that's on the point of the the homework and the reflection and the reading that happens in between sessions. Uh, one of our challenges is it was true for this, but it's going to be even more true when we do things like community led mail, which are much, mm. which are pretty complex. And we require people to be able to go back, work in teams, do some practical exercises and come back. But we want to understand, is that a possibility? Or do you think that with the work that you have, you are just not going to have the time after the calls to go back? reflect, do some practice exercises or group work. How do people feel about that? Um, and Sarah, if you can just translate that, I think that's the last question really from our end. Okay. Uh, J'ai juste une dernière question uh, sur le travail que qu'il y a à faire à domicile et la lecture entre les sessions. L'un de nos défis est que les sujets que nous couvrions couvriront seront complexes et nous voudrons que vous fassiez des exercices pratiques entre les appels. Et est-ce que ça, c'est une possibilité ou pensez-vous que vous n'aurez pas le temps euh, entre les appels pour faire plus de travail? Donc, peut-être euh, vous pouvez mettre dans le chat si, si c'est possible ou, ou pas possible. Uh, and there is something from in French. I don't know if it's a response to this question or. It's a request to send the questions in an email after the session, um, which we can absolutely do. Yeah, so we will be sending out the recording from this session. Uh, the SWOT and the PESTAL tables that we developed in both languages, as well as the breakout group recording for the session that you did not attend, uh, all of that in a comprehensive email. And we will also be creating a section on the website to, uh, to curate all of this material on strategic planning in one place. Uh, nous vous, vous enverrons toutes les informations de la session, les questions, Euh, l'enregistrement et toute autre information après la session dans un email. Well, if there is nothing, then we can leave our question with you for to mull about uh, and, and let us know about the homework and how to work in between sessions. It will be super important for us as we plan the other learning labs on community-led MEL specifically, which definitely does require work in between sessions. So any suggestions on that would be super helpful. And with that, thank you so much for being here and for bringing so much experience for us. Merci à tous pour vos réponses. Il sera utile d'avoir vos suggestions pour le futur appel. Et juste pour finir, merci beaucoup d'être ici et d'apporter votre sagesse et, et vos expériences à l'appel. Et merci pour votre participation et votre patience. Merci bien. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you too. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thanks Bye, so much, Sophie and Sultan. It's been such an incredible honor and pleasure working with both of you. Cheers. Thank Bye. You, Looking forward to more sessions. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.